Hi everyone, I am Sarjay Sarkar, a second year PhD student at Centre for Digital Music at Queen Mary University of London. This is the extended presentation of our work which explores the separation of vocal harmonies from choral music using time domain deep learning models. This work was done under the supervision of Dr. Emmanuel Benetos and Professor Mark Sandler. In the last couple of decades, we have seen music recording and production become more accessible with many people producing great quality music from their bedrooms. This has been enabled due to the vast improvements in digital instruments and effects and increased computing power made available to everyone. But this doesn't extend equally to recording real instruments. In my PhD, I want to explore further in this direction to develop source separation models that can further simplify the music production process, bridging the gap between making music at expensive studios in highly controlled environments and recording music at home or at live venues. So far, music separation research has been focused on separating instruments from songs for karaoke-like applications. Moreover, research has been restricted to vocals, bass, and drum separation from pop songs, which is aided by the very popular MuseDB dataset, which only contains vocals, bass, and drum stems. The lack of research for the other tasks is not actually due to lack of data, but more due to the variability of mixing practices available in multi-track datasets and lack of sufficient metadata of mixing projects in datasets like MedleyDB and Mixing Secrets dataset by Cambridge MT. This has resulted in gaps towards research for more specific music separation tasks like separating string sections or choirs, which is what we focus our study on. Choral music usually consists of multiple singers of different vocal registers singing in harmony. In our experiments, we consider four-part choirs consisting of bass, alto, tenor, and soprano singers singing in harmony. The problem is different from the music separation task as all the sources presented in the mixture have very similar timbres as they are all vocalists. This is quite a challenging mixture to separate as the frequency ranges of all the vocalists are highly overlapping, the relative loudness of each of the sources are quite similar, and due to the relationship between the musical harmonies and pitch harmonics, the spectral distribution is quite dense. To give a brief introduction to time domain separation, we compare it with spectrograms, where the audio signal is decomposed into different sinusoidal components with the respective amplitude and phase for each time frequency bin. In the time domain separation, instead of using a Fourier transform to decompose the audio to a 2D representation, we learn a filter bank that decomposes the mixture most effectively in a non-overlapping fashion to enable more effective separation. In time domain models, we can keep the window sizes to be very small, as low as two samples, while maintaining a sufficiently large filter bank. This allows for the masking to work at a much higher temporal resolution. One of our biggest challenges for our task is making time domain models work with high fidelity music mixtures, since speech is typically processed at 8 kHz, but in music we usually work with 44 kHz sampling rate. This results in significantly higher computational complexity, especially with smaller filter banks, as both these factors increase the number of steps you need to process for the same duration of audio by more than 100 times. Optimizing time domain separation for higher sampling rates becomes a balancing act between many trade-offs. Smaller filter banks allow separation with better temporal resolution. This results in more memory required during training as the number of backpropagations required are much higher due to the small hop size of as low as one sample. This results in a trade-off between the number of repeated separator blocks, duration of audio per batch, and the filter length given the GPU memory constraints. In our experiments, we work at 22.05 kHz, which was optimal for the recording conditions of our data. We find that using a moderate filter bank size of 16 samples allows us to provide the model with more temporal context of around 5 seconds per batch and 8 repeating units, resulting in better performance. This is a departure from the state-of-the-art speech separation model results, which use two sample filter banks at 8 kHz sample rate audio. While training our models, we saw that randomizing training mixtures, that is to select parts of different songs to generate an artificial mixture to train the model, significantly hurts our model's performance. This was surprising as random mixing has been a well-reported augmentation technique used in the common music separation task. While randomizing a fraction of the training examples and keeping the overall dataset size fixed, we see the model's performance drop monotonically as we increase the percentage of randomized training examples. We also used randomization as an augmentation technique where we add new artificially mixed training examples and found that the model's performance was not improved by this. 
Although it makes sense why training with musically incoherent random mixtures sounds like a bad idea, we wanted to scientifically show why this indeed doesn't work for choral mixtures. Thus, we introduced a measure for harmonic complexity called harmonic overlap, which says how difficult it is to separate any two notes being played together. For example, two people singing an octave apart are likely more difficult to separate than two people singing a third or a fifth interval. If a mixture is composed of incoherent singing tracks from different songs, or even different parts of the same song, then the harmonic overlap is negligible as the singers will not sing in harmonized fashion and also will not be synchronized in time. To calculate the harmonic overlap, we compute the first 16 overtones for each pair of notes in the mixture and count the number of overlapping overtones between them. We calculated a few different hypotheses with different frequency bin resolutions and chose the 5 bins per semitone resolution as the overlap scores achieved for the different intervals correlate well with our perception of intervals. By comparing the measured harmonic overlap of our test cases and the separation achieved by our model on them, we show that our model does in fact perform poorer for the examples that have higher harmonic overlap. This also supports our finding where randomizing mixtures during training negatively affected the performance since randomizing mixtures destroys the harmonic overlap between the sources. This implies that the model needs to be trained with examples with properly harmonized vocals which have high harmonic overlap in order to be able to perform effectively in test case scenarios with high harmonic overlap. The confidence interval in the presented plot shows high variation which suggests that our measure of harmonic overlap might not be the complete picture that affects our separation's quality. We tested some alternate hypotheses to measure harmonic complexity based on manual interval rankings and pitch distances. Although these correlations were not as strong as our proposed measure for harmonic overlap, we found that these hypotheses also correlate well with our intuitive understanding. We achieve very good results as compared to the existing literature. Although fair comparisons are difficult, since the other models were trained and tested on different datasets, which were either synthesized or their ground truth stems contained bleed. Bleed present in the ground truth is a common issue in the domain of ensemble separation, since musical ensembles are typically recorded in a space where the performers can interact with each other, thus resulting in bleed in the recordings. Here is an example of a four-part a cappella recording. Here are the four separated results from our model. We also tested our model on three and two part a cappella mixtures where the results are better as expected. Here is an example of a two source a cappella mixture. And here is the separated result from our model. The two source separation results are highly promising as we see that the separation quality is very good for high SNR scenarios which is the case with the bleed we typically experience in music production scenarios. We intend to further explore such use cases and investigate applications of source separation as tools for music production in the context of bleed removal, room, and microphone corrections. Thanks a lot for watching our presentation. Hope you found our work interesting and please feel free to reach out to me via email or on LinkedIn. More audio examples from my research can be found on the link provided on screen. Thank you.